please help me welcome Mrs. Terry Beatley. Thank you. How did America, and most particularly Catholic political leaders, evolve from virtually no support at all a hundred years ago for any of Margaret Sanger's thinking, her doctrine, her religion, her worldview of promiscuity, eugenics, and birth control, how did we morph into a country in which a Catholic governor in New York proudly declares unfettered abortion over his state in the name of equality and women's reproductive rights and lighting up the World Trade Center with Planned Parenthood pink. So why is it that so many Catholics support, you know, whether it be politicians or laity, support the industry of abortion? And why is it that 24% of all abortions are on Catholic women? How did this happen? Well, part of the answer rests in understanding the Catholic strategy, a very stealthy, an intentional, deadly plan to undermine, to subvert, to deceive, and then use Catholics to advance abortion onto America and destroy America's historical protection of human life. I will give you the proof tonight of what I just said. The name of the book, What If We've Been Wrong, comes from Dr. Nathanson's resignation letter. I didn't tell you the best part. I'm gonna tell you now just in case I don't forget it. So first he was an atheist or agnostic, you can debate that back and forth. Then the science made him pro-life. And then years of contemplating suicide. He crossed paths with a priest who gave him five years of lots of spiritual guidance and Dr. Bernard Nathanson was received into the Catholic Church on December 8, 1996, on the feast day of the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Woohoo! <laughs> so that's why I say he's the modern day Saul to Paul. Okay? All right, so here's the end of his resignation letter to Nayrow, and it says The judgments of the Supreme Court were never meant to be infallible or eternal. And what if we've been wrong? What if we've been wrong? If the courts should soon reverse itself on the abortion issue in the light of changing times and or new scientific evidence, what an incalculable injustice will have been perpetrated. What an immeasurable, irretrievable loss will have been suffered. The annual dues to NARAL are $10 a year and the hubris, the arrogance, of certainty. I can no longer afford those dues. Sincerely, Bernard N. Nathanson. Isn't that awesome? And America doesn't know his story. Nayral holds an executive committee meeting, an emergency meeting. It's called by Lawrence Later. Lawrence Later is so worried about something, a most serious threat to abortion advocacy. And do you know what that threat was? It was the increasing number of live-born babies who were surviving second and third trimester saline abortions. Lawrence later considered these babies an embarrassment, an embarrassment. And he was afraid that the press was making too much of these survive, survivors of abortion. And he was afraid that the opposition elements would seize upon them as a tactic in the abortion wars. Who or what was the biggest opposition element that they were afraid of? I heard this lady right here in the, in the vest, okay. The Catholic Church, that's right. It was not pro-life legislators. So, but why would they fear the Catholic Church so much in 1970, 1971? Why? Well, for 1900 years, basically, the Catholic Church had identified abortion as intrinsically evil and morally indefensible. The church fathers wrote against it, the word of God warned against it, and they acted pro-life. They rescued those women. They rescued those babies who had been put on the other side of the Roman walls or what have you from infanticide. 
So what happened then to the Catholic Church? 